Commodity prices are likely to see tailwinds from rising inflation this year on the back of increasing money supply. This according to Steve Hankey, a professor of applied economics at Johns Hopkins University. Welcome back, Professor. Good to be with you, David. Steve, uh, I'd like to ask you first and foremost about monetary policy and money supply offline. You're telling me the money supply is increasing. Well, we know that from 2020. What's the newest reading of the money supply in 2021? Uh, well, the, the last reading in December of uh, last year uh, is 28.9% year over year. That's from the Center for Financial Stability, and it's for what's called Divisia M4. That's a broad measure of money, very accurately measured. The, the center puts this out. Uh, the, the key guy is Bill Barnett. Uh, Professor Barnett developed all of this uh, and, and is the world's authority. This is where you get the data. So this is where you have to be looking at the money supply. And the reason you have to look at the money supply, forget interest rates. <laughs> it's the money supply that counts. Or, or, or as, as we would say, it's a money supply, stupid. That's, that is what drives the nominal GDP in the economy. And the nominal GDP has two components, a real component, the real growth in the economy, and then whatever is left over is inflation. You add them both together and you get nominal GDP. And that is very closely correlated with the rate of growth in broad money. So let's say broad money has been growing over 20% since April of last year. Let's, let's say it's growing at almost 30% now. And if the economy, the real economy, would have a record growth rate of 5%, let us say, what's, what's the residual? It's almost 25%. It is 25%. And in that little hypothetical I gave you, that's a that's a lot of inflation. I'm not I'm not predicting that it, we're going to have 25 percent inflation, David. But I'm just saying there's a lot of juice in the system. You can't increase broad money at these double digit rates like this and expect prices to remain calm. They they are not, and we're picking up the early indications of that juice in commodity prices, soybeans, steel, corn, you name it, oil, they're all going up. Okay. So a few things. So when you, when you say m broad money, it's like uh, you're referring to cash and cash equivalents, like short-term liquidity? Well, it, it, it starts with cash, that, uh, but it goes all the way out. It's got 14 components in it. And, and the M component that's included in M4 are tra T bills, treasury bills. Now, th those have a lot of moneyness in them. They, they won't get 100% weight. They won't be weighted like cash, which is weighted at 100% liquid, shall we say. You can use cash in checking deposits uh, you know, for immediate transactions. To, you can't immediately go into the grocery store with a T-bill and hand it to the grocer and buy your, your groceries. You first, you first have to switch that to cash or, or a, a checking account uh, credit and, and then use the checking account or the cash to buy things and transactions. But it's got a lot of money now, so it's included in the Divisia. Divisia weights all these things, starting with cash, which gets a full weight, all the way out to T-bills, which gets a lighter weight. So why is the money supply increasing right now? Is it all from stimulus? It, well, in, indirectly, because what's, what's going on, the stimulus, the government spending, the deficit is increasing. The Treasury is issuing a lot of debt, and, and the Federal Reserve is buying the debt. So the Federal Reserve's balance sheet is expanding when they buy that debt. They're monetizing the debt right now. That's why. They're monetizing the debt, and that's why the money supply is going up. 
Yeah, because here's what I'm thinking, Professor, is that here's my theory, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is that if if people can't go out and spend money because of coronavirus, uh, inflation is still going to be muted, even though there might be more money supply, right? Well, no, because the money the money supply it it, it does go into households uh, at, at, at the exact proportion. I don't have it off the top of my head, but it does go in. And as the money balances increase in a household, you, you spend it. You, you can save it or spend it, but you, you spend it. And, and, and we have no record of anything in history where you get the money supply growing and you don't get nominal GDP going up. The, these things go lockstep. Well, could people not save it? They, they could, yes, but they, they the fact is they historically certainly they haven't. You you could get them just you know putting putting everything under the mattress and leaving it there and never spending it, but that that's not what people usually do. They spend it and and they they save some of it, but they spend it. So you're saying the increase in money supply is likely to lead to an increase in the GDP. Well, isn't that a good thing? Don't we want more economic output, Professor? Well, we, yeah, we, we, we want higher real output, but not necessarily nominal output. It'll, the money supply going up increases a nominal GDP, but the nominal GDP has a real component and an inflation component. And, and, we, and we don't want the inflation component going up. That's bad. The real part, the real part going up is good, but the inflation part going up is bad. But the the point is, with with the money supply broadly measured going up by almost thirty percent year over year, there there's no way that there won't be a lot of inflation left in that nominal GDP component. Well, okay, so I spoke to a guest not too long ago, and he, he, he forecasts that inflation could rise above the Fed's 2% target this year. In fact, his, his, his prognosis was by, by spring. Is that a little bit too aggressive, or is that right on the money? No, it's probably not aggressive enough. Wow. But we're not going to get hyperinflation, right? <laughs> because we, talk, no, we talked not, about this. We talked about that. Hyperinflation, remember, that's 50% per right. month inflation, not, not per year. 50% per month. No, but to, to give you an idea, you know, no, nominal GDP goes up very fast in a country like Venezuela. Venezuela's nominal GDP goes up very fast. Their, their inflation rate year over year is about 2,100%. So the nominal GDP goes up a couple of thousand percent per year, but the real GDP is actually going negative. Uh, the, the Federal Reserve takes cues from core inflation, so X food and energy. Have you noticed a pickup in core inflation over the net last year? It, it, it's been it's been rather flat, but it, it's it's starting to tick up just a little. It's ticking up a little bit. Everything's ticking up a little, all, all across the board, ticking up a little bit. And and if you go back to again what what we're looking at commodities, they're going up a lot. So why is it picking up now and not why didn't it pick up earlier in the year when there was this massive stimulus program from the monetary and fiscal sides? Well, it, it takes a while to work through the system. There's a little lag between the it's not like just turning a light switch on when the money supply goes up one month. Well, inflation doesn't all of a sudden zoom up. It takes a few months. And that's that's what we're going to see. We will see a lot of unanticipated inflation coming up because people are kind of asleep at the switch. They're kind of making the argument like you just made, oh, gee, the money supply went up, but you know, the prices didn't go up right away. I mean, what are you worried about, Hanky? You know, relax. And 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 everyone is gonna be kind of relaxing. And, and all of a sudden, they're gonna walk in and get a little bit of a sticker shock when they see, when, when they see what the prices are by, by the middle of this year. Well, my, gro my personal grocery bill has already gone up. You know, I can tell you that over the last year. But again, monetary policy doesn't look at food. So I'm just wondering if the Fed is going to do anything about it. 
the, the, the Fed's going to be late to the party. They've already indicated the, the federal government with the Biden administration and the new Secretary of Treasury, Yellen, which I assume she'll be confirmed in the next few days, has already indicated that she wants to max out on the stimulus as much as possible. That means a big, bigger federal debt. That means the Treasury will be issuing more debt and the Fed will be buying it, and, and the Fed has indicated that it will continue to purchase this debt to keep interest rates down so that the financing cost to the federal government for issuing all that debt will remain low. So that's the game plan for the immediate horizon. And, 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 Yell and Yellen has said, Oh, we'll, we'll worry about the after effects of the stimulus later. Right now, we have to stimulate. So their, their idea is press the accelerator down to the floorboard and leave it there for as long as, as, we, uh, as we possibly can. And, and the Fed will accommodate that. And I think the Fed will be surprised when inflation jumps up to three and a half or four percent. Then, then the Fed will start talking about putting the brakes on, but not until then. Okay. I think inflation will have to get up to 4% before they'll start talking about breaking. Well, they've, they've talked about keeping rates low until what, I think 2022, 23? So, right. so it's possible we won't see 4% inflation until then or maybe before and they'll get surprised. Yeah, well, I, think it'll, I think it'll be before then. And, okay. and by the way, it isn't, it isn't keeping your eye on the rates that, Interest rates follow inflation, not the other way around. Interest rates don't drive where inflation is going. The, the, money, the money supply drives inflation, and interest rates follow the inflation level. So we will see this money supply continuing, in my view, to be very exaggerated and accelerated. That will lead to more inflation. And, and that eventually will lead to higher nominal interest rates. Right. Okay. So can't, well, can the Fed raise interest rates, even if inflation runs above 2%, what would happen to the economy? Well, they, they, can, they can slow down the growth rate in, in, in the money supply. That's the key. It's, it's not the interest rate. Everyone, everyone. But you, you just have to look at the money supply broadly measured. That is what you have to keep your eye on. And, and, and the Fed can slow it down and they can accelerate it. We've seen, by the way, starting with, with April, look, I'm just looking at the numbers here. We, we had in December of 2018, the broad money, the Vizi M4, was growing at 4.1% year over year. Then they accelerated, accelerated through 19, at the end of December 2019 at 6.7%. Then we, we went to March 2020, and it, it had reached 9.7%, almost 10%. And then, boom, in April, it jumped up to 22.1%. So they, they can... They can they can accelerate it or decelerate it at the drop of a hat. And that's what you want to watch. You want to go to the Center for Financial Stability and watch these monthly numbers and see what's going on with broad money. That, that will tell you where the nominal GDP level is going in the economy. I'm just concerned that if the Fed tightens monetary policy in response to higher inflation, will slump back into negative GDP growth again. Could that happen? Well, well, it, 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 what's going to happen it, if 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 they hit the, the panic button and start slowing things down, the stock market will come off. That that's when the stock market and the multiples on stock prices will come down. Is when the Fed starts tightening and slowing down the money supply. But but that's that's on down the road. That that won't happen until inflation becomes threatening, and I think. It will become threatening if it gets up to about three and a half or four percent. The Fed will feel threatened and they will start squeezing then. And the money supply probably will start slowing down. And 
the, the bloom will come off the, 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 the lily at the, in the stock market. Stock market multiples will come down then. But that's, that, that's on down the road. Uh, so, Professor, what are the instruments that we can buy to protect ourselves against inflation in terms of securities, commodities, uh, wh whatever the case may be? Uh, well, commodities, number one, and, and we talked about oil. I mean, oil, oil is fine. How about the Bloomberg Commodity Index? I mean, that's, that's one. There, there, there are a variety of commodity indexes that can be uh, purchased and, and are a good a good hedge and in inflation and, and, and they're doing well treasury inflation protected securities are, are another thing those are us issued by the us government and and a lot of funds are flowing into those right now uh, gold is a particular thing a, a favorite of people who are worried about inflation and i and i'm very bullish on gold as you know so all, all the commodities Gold. If you, if you're if you're looking at securities, uh, the Treasury inflation protected securities are are fine. It turns out stocks are not a great hedge against inflation, by the way. And and one re and and one reason they aren't is that they they've gone up very nicely. You know, the as as interest rates came down. The multiples went way up on stocks, and, and, and stocks have been doing very well. But that that will turn around as soon as the Fed starts becoming worried about inflation, and they start tightening things up. I think then we will see interest rates starting to go up because interest rates follow inflation, and as interest rates go up, you'll see the stock price multiples come down, and the the, the, the bloom will come off the stock market. Okay. And uh, we don't talk about oil a lot on the show, but I'm curious to get your thoughts. Do you think oil is going to go up? Do you think that demand is there this year in 2021? I, I, I think demand completely dried up with the virus and it's coming back. And, and, and the supply is, is simply not coming back. And investment in oil is, is not what it was. So I think the surprise in oil is, it's probably going to be a little stronger than people think. Could it go up to $100? I think uh, I had a guest on recently. He expected $100 a barrel by the end of the year. Is that is that uh, fair think, for you? I, well, I think that guest is an optimist. Let's okay. put it that way. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, thank you so much for coming on the show. That was a great story. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah good good to be with you, David. Thank we'll you. Yeah, we'll catch up again soon. Thank you for watching Kickle News. I'm David Lynn.